episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the Gym Aware. In today's world of strength and conditioning, data collections become the utmost of importance, and that's exactly where Gym Aware separates itself from the competition. Because when we're sitting there and looking to collect data, what data are you actually collecting? And are the numbers you're looking at fitting into the exercises that you're utilizing? And even more so, are they going to answer the questions that you're looking for? Looking at different ways that you are moving the barbell through peak and mean, both velocity and power, is really what separates gym aware from the competition. Being able to understand what your ballistic exercises are doing separate to what your strength exercises are doing really allows you to program at a much more specific level for your athletes. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au to see what Evan and his team have in store for you today. Hey guys, Evan from Gym Aware. We're really happy to be supporting Coach DeMayo's podcast series once again. For those that don't know, our main product is Gym Aware. It's the gold standard for measuring performance and implementing velocity-based training in the weight room. It excels in busy team training environments, and for many coaches, it's the Swiss Army knife of their toolkit. The Gym Aware is used for athlete profiling, jump testing, fatigue monitoring, and for listing within velocity zones. The system provides real-time feedback on individual targets, plus it's got an impressive range of leaderboards. Now, for those that are after a VBT device that's affordable, for the individual and for smaller groups, we recently released our new laser-based product, Flex. Importantly, it's been independently validated and proven to be both accurate and reliable. So if you're interested in either product, or you want to learn more about the velocity-based training and how it can help you as a coach, Check out our website or contact us directly. So in the meantime, we trust you enjoy the Coach DeMayo's podcast, Outside the Rack. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 94th episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper in the minds of the top practitioners in the world of sport performance to learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by the Director of Sport Performance at the University of Denver, Matt Shaw. Matt, man, thanks for being with us today. Yeah, excited to be on, man. Yeah, man, glad you could spare a little time. I know things have been been a bit crazy out there in Denver with everything and this whole pandemic and all this and that, but I'm glad to see you're doing well. I'm glad we could catch up a little bit here, man. But before we get too far into this, who is Matt? It's a good question. Um, so I, I guess uh, Midwest kid. Um, I grew up in St. Louis and, and moved to Boston halfway through high school. Got a bomb drop on me that the family was picking up and going. Um, so I spent, you know, my, my back half of my high school, undergrad, master's, GA, everything in the Northeast. And then got an opportunity to come out here. Um, to Denver, but it was by way of six internships. And, you know, I, I had a sport background in high school that led me into this field. But I think most importantly, I'm a product of my, my experiences, my family, um, and, and the things that I've gone through in life. And I think that's what shaped me, you know, so I'm, I'm the son of two psychologists, uh, for better or for worse. Um, you know, so growing up with I think actually more of an appreciation now than probably back then, but growing up with two people that, you know, one were almost analytical in a lot of the ways that they thought um, and cognitive, they were on more on the academic side. Um, and so they taught me a lot. And then I was the grandson of a coach. Uh, my grandfather used to be the head baseball coach at Kent state um, was the Dean of physical education. Um, and so you know, I wasn't even at the age where I think I appreciated his background. Um, but I think that as I progressed in my career, you know, I think that I progress like really appreciate it more and more. That's an interesting couple like shifts there. The coach to the psychologist. Yeah. You know, That's it's pretty it's different. Yeah, you know, I grew up like playing sports, um, swimming, water polo, and lacrosse. And like, I remember my parents taking me through like progressive relaxation between like prelims, finals, you know, things like that, and getting an exposure that I'm literally using weekly today. Um, and also, I think just the relationship focused with athletes, you know, having the ability to just 
you know, be interpersonal with, with how we interact and, and asking questions about how they're doing and getting them to, to open up with difficulties that they're going through besides surface level questioning. Um, and so I think that, you know, I, I've, I've appreciated more and more the things that they've taught me throughout life, uh, but also the challenges that I went through and the, the adversity of hitting of moving uh, when I never wanted to in the middle of high school. Um, and then going into a completely different culture in the Northeast um, and seeing just the hustle and bustle and the workman like blue class attitude of, of you know, the Northeast and Boston um, taught me a lot about work ethic. Um, and so, you know, ended up, like I said, doing, a, I think at one point I read five or six internships completed. Um, and my parents were getting ready to pull their hair out and ask me when I was going to start to, to make a, a little bit of money. <laughs> Um, and I held down different part-time jobs doing personal training on the side at three different gyms while doing that in my undergrad. Um, and so those things have taught me, I think that, you know, valuable skills that hopefully through my experiences, I can pass down to some of our student athletes that think that, you know, their schedules are tough or what they've gone through, you know, is, is the peak in terms of adversity that they're going to hit that there's always more that can be done on the front end um, to set them up for success, and whether it's academic, athletic, or anything else that they're trying to hit in life. Yeah, but then the important question is, you know, you, with you being a hockey guy that isn't even on the list is blues or bees? She <laughs> so funny. I think I've been on the ice one time in my life. It, like, you know, at some point, like I started off as basketball guy at BU, um, I thought that that was going to be the route my career was going to take. Um, had a couple in terms of hockey, but I mean, that's, that's a hard question because I actually work with guys on both teams currently. Um, and so, I, you know, I've, I grew up in St. Louis um, and it was an amazing, you know, environment to watch Blues games, um, you know, back with like Hall and Pronger, uh, McKinnis, all those, you know, amazing players. Uh, but then I got to see more championships won during my 10 years in Boston than I'll probably see in the next, you know, 40 years of my life with wherever city I'm in. I don't know, man. You, you guys have done some pretty good stuff down there. <laughs> you know, I'm not, not trying to put any extra pressure, but, you know, you guys have done pretty good. <laughs> like, that's a pretty good program you got down there at Denver. Yeah. No, we've done well. We've uh, continued to push the banner of what we can do as a program, that's for sure. So yeah. it's been fun. But, I mean, listen, man, bouncing side to side and having – and then coming back over and down a little bit, but having all those internships and being able to, to work with all those those guys who have made it to the show, I mean, like, there's got to be a bunch of awesome learning situations through that. So I'm fired up for number one, buddy. If you wouldn't mind – Describe a learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career. Yes, you, you know what? I think I was just reminded of this one the other uh, the other week. Uh, I think the epiphany comes as how important relationships are. Um, I was talking with a former intern um, who is going through a, a job change um, because of a closure um, at a university. And so he's losing his job in the coming months. And I realized during the conversation that, you know, when, when interns come in, I don't think that all the time they realize how important it is to establish a relationship and reach out and ask for help. Um, he, it was actually somebody that we had talked with and you know, we actually told him that he needed to reach out and ask for help. He needed to use his network and the people in his corner to go to bat for him when he needed it most. Um, and so really shortly, we made a series of phone calls and almost immediately got him an interview with another institution um, that I think is going to be a great fit um, and an opportunity that he needs in his life in the right time. But I think that more and more interns, I think, are starting to view experience as like a checklist, you know, that it's like you, you go out and you do it and, and you're done with it. It's on your resume and you're good. And what the epiphany came was because of just how important those relationships are and establishing a support system for you as you progress in your career. Um, just like what I had to deal with. Like I, I told this story, but 
um, to, to this individual. Uh, but I was in a situation where I was getting ready to be done with my GA position. And I was lucky enough to, during all those internships, to also travel during vacations and to meet some great people while I was on family vacations. So, you know, went out and spent Thanksgiving um, out in California and San Francisco, drove down and had previously met Mike Potenza uh, with the San Jose Sharks and asked if I could just drop in and just meet with him a little bit that day. Um, and so we spent the afternoon just talking and having lunch um, in the middle of a family vacation around Thanksgiving. Sure enough, he was one of the guys that right out of the, uh, the gate of my GA position put me in touch with Dwayne Carlisle at Purdue and put me in a position to have an opportunity to go for the assistant director position for basketball with Coach Painter. Um, ended up going head to head against another guy for that position. Um, that I had visited with a year before with the Chicago Bulls and Josh Bonha. Um, and Josh and I had met at BU um, and did the same thing. I was in Chicago, um, gave him a ring so that I was going to be in town. And I ended up meeting with him and, and getting to, to meet with Eric Helland a little bit. Um, and those relationships were so key because they, they leveraged a situation where I was coming out of my GA position and had an unbelievable opportunity. And I didn't end up getting the position and Josh did. Um, but it was a series of moments that and decisions that led to opportunities and to growth. Um, and one other situation that comes to mind was helping, uh, you know, uh, there's a staff member um, at Harvard who had moved down to take a job at Delaware um, and coach Hess. And at the time he was taking, I think it was the assistant or the head job um, uh, under Augie Morelli and ended up um, helping him move and meeting with Augie. Well, short story, like it was unbelievable, but like when I was finishing up my first year at BU, Augie put my position um, at BU on someone's radar and said that you should really call Matt for the hockey job at Denver. Um, and I had actually turned down an opportunity with Delaware um, after meeting with him because BU stepped up to create a position for me full time. And he still put my name in into the ring um, for, for the Denver hockey job. And I ended up getting the job because he just told somebody to reach out to me. Um, so you don't know when people are gonna help support you professionally or the impact that you can make in a, in a quick moment of meeting with somebody. Um, but those situations occur because of the time that you take and the relationships established um, and doing whatever you can in those moments to illustrate your professionalism. And uh, I think just trying to go above and beyond to, to network with people. That's pretty rad, man. And I think that that's something, I think that that's two things that you brought up now that a lot of the younger coaches can take note of, and that is the role of internships and the role of not just like sliding in people's DMs and stuff, but like actually like, trying to show up and meet people and see what goes on and, and staying in touch i mean like you know like i, I remember interns that we've had um and then i've i think we've had a lot that have come and gone without ever reaching back out or asking for help and then you hear that either they're struggling or they're doing great in certain situations but like i mean you got you got to ask for help when needed and i think that like it doesn't stop when your internship stops um, that we should be there to help support, you know, the people that have done, you know, right by us in our environments and help support our student athletes in our environment to become better. Uh, but it's up to us to help support them when it's time to get a job um, and to go after opportunities and to give back to the field with the right people. Um, so kind of view that as like being a gatekeeper for quality coaches. Um, but I, I do take it seriously and making sure that like we stay in touch with people or, and, and hope that people reach out to us as well. I dig it, man. And as a guy who's, again, done these things and reached out and found ways even on family vacations to get in touch with, with colleagues, there's got to be some inquisitiveness to you to do that. So that brings us to number two, brother. If there was one question that Matt could ask and he knows he's going to get the answer to it, what would that question be and why? Man, I think I shared this with you earlier. This is probably one of the tougher questions that I've heard in a long time. Like, 
but, but I think like in the last few years, to me, it comes down to the effectiveness of individualizing the stress for athletes. You know, it's like, if I ask the question of like, what can be done to individualize stress and especially in the college environment, that's so complex in terms of the NCAA time restrictions, it, you know, the, the staffing, the, the facility operation and logistics, but like what can actually be done to maximize individual stress, you know, depending on where we're at in the time of the year, all the way down to the physiological differences with athletes. Um, you know, how far can we guide that point before it almost also be, can become detrimental in terms of coaching um, and overcomplicating things to, to a fault? Um, but what's that sweet spot? That's really a million dollar question. So like, we, we've gone down some rabbit holes about this one. You know, it's like in, in individual work, I mean, like you can also view it as everyone's going through general physical preparation because no one's lifting the bar in the middle of the field. You, you know, it's like everyone has a level of general physical prerequisites in terms of strength, movement, speed, fitness. It, it is are certain things worth not chasing because more time can be spent establishing culture or, you know, other things like improving confidence in, in other ways that, make a bigger impact into a team setting dude 100 percent. and i think that there's the number of different rabbit holes you can run down in in that entire just stress strong enough whatever different kind of variant of it it can be paralyzing for sure I mean, even the decisions of like how much time you're going to spend evaluating, testing, um, doing individually prescribed extra work on people, like how effective that's going to be on top of adding stress within season stress. Like there's so many ways of looking at individual based work. And at some point it's on an axis of being beneficial, but also can come down to being negative. Um, and sometimes it's on the coaching side. You know, it's like the more complicated things become, the more difficult it is to coach and establish effectiveness. Um, so there's beauty and simplicity. Um, but also there's individual buckets that people need to fill that might be different or exercise selection or range of motion differences in terms of stress that, you know, there, there is value in prescribing. And so it's, it's always that balancing act. But I think, I think some level of answering that question to me would be, I think uh, like a key cog in, in a bigger machine. No doubt, man. But another balancing act that we all go through is when we get into these insane hours and grinds and things that we deal with in the regular is finding a way to get back to neutral. So with that in mind, man, what's, what's Matt's escape? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm, I'm blessed to be in a state that's fun to get outside. Um, you know, I think over the years, my family and my wife and my kid, we've relied on, um, getting outside and doing things like camping, enjoying time together as a family, hiking, um, you know, really love fishing when I get up to, uh, Michigan to visit the in-laws, um, and going up to the UP. Uh, but I think it probably has more and more to do with being outside and away from technology, um, and, and more just about being in silence, um, and enjoying what's what's around me um, and, and I think also just experiencing and having time with family like you know I've got a two-year-old at home um, and I look back at the time spent during COVID and how big of a blessing it was to see her develop and grow um, during that time period and I never would have had some of that time um, if if the job was in full go and swing um, so I think ha having family time and being able to have a balancing act is huge. Yeah, man. And for a dude that likes to get outside, I don't think, I don't think Denver's really an awful spot. No, I mean, it's, it's nice being able to, uh, there's, I mean, the, the community of hiking trails just in the Denver area, um, and then being able to drive into the mountains, um, on a, a short distance and being able to escape in a completely different feeling, um, whether it's in the middle of the winter and going skiing or whether it's 
you know, during the summertime and exploring and hiking and even getting out to different areas like Moab. Um, it, it's, it's amazing with the national parks and just the, the region and just how blessed we are to have that in our back door. That's rad, man. That's really awesome. Well, Matt, man, I truly appreciate your time. This is fantastic stuff, brother. I'm glad you're doing great. It's great to catch up and we will be in touch soon. Awesome. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. Cheers.